3 through 775 to reduce densities and heights along portions of the park, Lexington 3rd and 2nd Avenue, to better respond to neighborhood context and minimize the risk of displacement of race stabilized units. The Council is also removing Eugene McCabe Field and a church site from the rezoning area, modifying the non-residential requirements along Park Avenue, and changing the MIH options, removing option 2, and adding the deep affordability option. We'll be voting to modify the Sendero Verde application, LU 776 through 782, to restrict the disposition of city-owned land to require that a minimum of 1,000 11,450 square feet of lot be devoted to community garden or past recreation use, and a minimum of an additional 18,000 square feet be devoted to use as a publicly accessible open space. We'll also be voting to approve a related tax exemption, LU-790. We will also be voting to approve with modifications LU-785 and 786, the special Harlem Waterfront District expansion. We will be modifying the text to require that some sites comply with the new rules rather than the previously applicable rules and to introduce a CPC authorization that would allow for a waiver of the required setback from the Deegan Expressway on certain sites. Today we will be voting to approve with modifications LUs 808 through 812, the Bedford Union Armory applications, EDC's applications for a proposed rezoning, MAP amendment from R6 to R7-2 and R7-2C2-4 zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area, special permit pursuant to section ZR section 74-743, special permit pursuant to ZR section 74-532 and disposition approval for city-owned property at 155 5 Bedford Avenue, Brooklyn, in order to facilitate the redevelopment of the Bedford Union Armory as a mixed units community facility. Can we ask folks if you have to speak just to please whisper? Recreation, office, and residential center. We'll be modifying the application to strike MIH option two. I wasn't talking about you, I was talking about your neighbors to the left. And we will make applicable MIH option one. I want to acknowledge our colleague, Council Member Cumba, who worked with her constituents of the community for over a year to achieve the affordable housing plan that we have with us today. We'll be voting to approve with modifications pre-considered LU, the East River 57 place tax amendment. Tax amendment would establish a modified version of the standards tower on base regulation for certain zoning lots in R10 districts, roughly bounded by the Queensboro Bridge, First Avenue, East 51st Street, and the East River and Community Board 6 in Manhattan. The areas and districts of Council Member Kalos and Garodnik, and they are co-applicants along with other elected officials in the East 50s Rivers Alliance for this tax amendment. The Council will be modifying the zoning text to remove the grandfathering provision added by the City Planning Commission to cover a specific development which is out of scale and character for this neighborhood. The IRFA application was in the works for many years, was a subject of substantial press coverage, and did not take this development by surprise. The development continues to have the standard recourse already provided under the city's existing zoning regulations to appeal for the BSA for more times to vest, which we, is what we expect that they will do. We'll be voting to approve pre-considered LU, the siting of a new 697 intermediate school in Council Member Van Damer's district. The proposed school will be located in the Sunnyside Gardens Historic District. We're voting to approve pre-considered LU application regarding 1646 Amsterdam Avenue. HPD seeks an exemption from real property tax pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for property located at Block 2, 73, Lot 32 in Council Member Levine's district in Manhattan. We're voting to approve LU 818, the Dunwell Plaza application submitted by HPD pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. This application is for a real property tax exemption for property located at Block 2114, Lot 35 in Councilmember Levine's district in Manhattan. We've also been joined by Councilmember Traeger. We'll also be voting to approve pre-considered LU, the Los Tres Unidos application. HPD seeks an exemption from real property taxes pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Financing Law to facilitate the rehabilitation of the property located at Block 1617. Lot 7 in Councilmember Perkins District in Manhattan. The NCP Park and Elton Apartments applications LU746 have been withdrawn. Accordingly, we will vote on a motion to file to remove it from our calendar. Are there any questions on these applications? Any council members like to make brief remarks on these applications? Yes, Council Member Cumbo for some brief remarks on the applications. Thank you, Chair Greenfield. I apologize. The remarks are not brief, but they are important. Can the uh, clerk please put up the clock? No, I'm joking. <laughs> For more than six years, the Crown Heights community has discussed and debated what to do with the Bedford Union Armory. I was proud to be there with Congressman Major Owens when this idea was first conceived of. Discussions originally centered on a goal of a state-of-the-art indoor recreation center. At the start, housing was seen as secondary to this goal and was primarily included in the project as a way to defund the recreation center. 
However, by the time EDC announced the selection of a developer in 2015, conditions in the community had dramatically changed. The front lines of gentrification have arrived in Crown Heights and Central Brooklyn. Since 2010, the average rent in Crown Heights has increased by over 20 percent. And for many, it has doubled and tripled. Market rent rates are now far outreaching longtime residents who built and sustained this community. My family, who has now lived in the community for over five generations, are amongst them. Many of those in rent stabilized apartments are facing pressure and harassment from new landlords. Development on affordable housing on public land is one of the most important tools we have to address the affordable housing crisis. And the Bedford Union Armory Project is one of the most significant pieces of public land we have left in Crown Heights. Throughout this ULERP process, I have repeatedly stated that development at the Armory must focus on helping Crown Heights ease the impacts of rising rents and gentrification. I promised to reject any proposal that included market rate condominiums and failed to provide a majority of apartments at rents that are truly affordable to the Crown Heights community. Today, I am proud that we have revised the Bedford Union Armory project that now lives up to the values of the community and what I have fought so hard to achieve. I want to take a few moments to go through some of the original uh, aspects of the project and how we've improved it. The original proposal included 50 percent market rate housing, including 48 luxury condominium units. Those 48 luxury condominium units have been completely eliminated. Luxury condominiums have no place on public land. I said it a year ago, and I've continued to say it, and I'm proud to say that we have eliminated all of the luxury condominiums on this project. I'm proud to say that the original project included 67 units at or below 60 percent AMI, only 67 units. Today, as a result of my negotiations with the administration, pressure from the community and local elected officials, the luxury condominiums not only have been eliminated, but we now have 60 percent of the units. That represents 250 units will be affordable at the 60 percent AMI level or below. This is unprecedented. Crown Heights has never seen this level of affordability in decades. So from 67 units, the residents of Crown Heights now have 250 units. 50 units will be affordable at 30 percent of AMI. This represents low-income housing and deep affordability. 24 units at 40 percent of AMI and 24 units at 50 percent of AMI and 152 units at 60 percent of AMI. There will also be a 10 percent set aside for those coming out of our shelter system into brand new high-quality housing. The community has spoken loud and clear, and together we are collectively addressing the issue of homelessness in our community by creating real permanent affordability. We stood up for real affordability, and we won. 250 units at 60 percent of AMI and below is the most significant new affordable housing project Crown Heights has seen in decades. I also want to, in the interest of time, bring your attention to the Recreation Center. The Bedford Union Armory will also deliver on the original goal of a state-of-the-art indoor recreation center with low-cost community access. The Armory's historic drill shed will be converted into a center with three full-size basketball courts, multi-purpose court space for activities like indoor soccer, a six-lane, 25-meter indoor swimming pool, and fitness rooms. Never before has Central Brooklyn seen a recreational facility of this quality and scale. Growing up in Brooklyn, New York, I remember that these sorts of anemones were things that we had to go very far to achieve. So for the community to have these sorts of anemones right at their front door is really a benefit to the community. As part of the terms of the 99-year ground lease, the developer will be required to provide a baseline of 1.25 million community benefits annually and is incentivized to provide an annual total of up to 1.75 million, which escalates over time. Half of all memberships will be reserved for the local community at a rate of $10 per month and $8 per month for children. This is well below the cost that it is at many community centers and recreational facilities across New York City. Young people will be able to participate in programs like Imagine Swim, and New, Hei New Heights youth will be able to do affordable basketball programs for our local young people.
The Recreation Center at the Armory will bring an anemone to the community that we have lacked for decades and greatly expand the range of low-cost athletic programming available to our youth. I also want to bring your attention to the not-for-profit organizations that will be a part of this. The developer has already reached an agreement with the following local not-for-profits, Brooklyn Community Pride Center, Digital Girl, Ife Tayo Cultural Arts Academy, the James E. Davis Stop the Violence Foundation, New Heights Youth, West Indian American Day Carnival Association, to name a few. And this is going to preserve institutions that have been working in our communities for decades, but have also faced the real challenges that gentrification has brought. On top of this, there will be an additional 24,000 square feet of space available along President Street, where the developer has pledged to work to bring Brooklyn Plaza Medical Center into the project, which will provide an invaluable community health resource for those that are uninsured. This will be a tremendous opportunity for so many who have not been able to experience quality health care in their own community simply because they lacked health insurance. There will also be a community advisory committee that's going to work with the neighborhood as well as the community to make sure that the Bedford Union Armory remains a part of the development and growth of the community and that the community's needs are met. Finally, as it pertains to labor, MWBE, local hiring and procurement. I am confident that the construction process of the Bedford Union Armory will also bring local benefits to Crown Heights. The developer has agreed to provide a living wage to all construction workers on the project and has committed to hosting multiple job fairs in the neighborhood to ensure local residents will have the opportunity to participate. I also want to bring your attention to the fact that under this ULERP process, this very well might be the most dramatic change in affordability that has ever been achieved on a single project. Thanks to the dedicated advocacy of the Crown Heights, the community, the Bedford Armory has been transformed from a project with market rate condominiums and less than 20% of housing units actually affordable to the community to a project that will stay fully in public ownership with 60% and I'll say it again, 60% 200, of 250 units will be truly affordable and low-income housing to the community. In closing, I just wanted to simply add that this has been a tremendous process. I want to thank all of my colleagues that have worked with me. Uh, negotiating a project during maternity leave is certainly a challenge, and I thank each and every one of you for your leadership, for your dedication. Uh, when this project began, Many people didn't want to see housing as part of the project. Many people wanted to see 100% affordable housing. Some people wanted a recreational center. Some felt that the recreational center wasn't that important. Some people wanted to see not-for-profit organizations. Others did not. This was an opportunity to hear all voices and to come up with the best solution possible. While everyone is not going to be pleased uh, with the final outcome, it is an example of many different ideas and views coming together in order to benefit the community. I'm proud of this project. I see that this is going to be an opportunity for our youth, for generations to come, to be able to play in a safe environment, to be able to have a safe, comfortable area where they can explore their many talents. This is also going to be a place where people are going to be able to afford to live in their own community. This is going to be a place for individuals to have, that are coming out of our homeless shelter, to have permanent housing. This is going to be a place where the uninsured are going to be able to have free or low-cost quality health care. This is going to be a place where local not-for-profits who have built and developed the neighborhood will have a place to stay. And this is going to be a safe space. And I care greatly about the future of our young people, which is why I have supported this project all along. I believe in the lives of our children, and I believe that they deserve to have a place to live, a place to play, and a place to learn. And that's what has inspired me this entire entire project. I thank everyone here today. I look forward to the support of my colleagues, and I will conclude um, just by saying thank you, because this has been a tremendously difficult process. So I turn it back over to Chair Greenfield, and I thank you for your support. Thank you very much for those brief remarks. <laughs> I will now turn it over to Councilmember Rukelos for what we hope will truly be brief remarks. <laughs> Uh, thank you to my colleagues on the Subcommittee on Zoning for voting in favor of the rezoning the East River 50's Sutton Place text amendment. I refer to my comments in the Subcommittee and will summarize for Land Use Committee members. 
We're hoping to stop the march of super tall buildings from commercial districts on East 57th Street into residential districts where they would displace rent regulated residents to build buildings for billionaires. We formed the East River 50s Alliance, which has grown to 45 buildings in the area with 2,600 individuals from 500 buildings all over the city with support from Friends of the Upper East Side Historic District, Civitas, and citywide organizations like the Municipal Arts Society. Councilmember Dan Garodnik, Senator Liz Kruger, and Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer are also co-applicants, and this has the support of Congressmember Carol Maloney. We worked with the Department of City Planning on several options for providing affordable housing as part of a proposal. DCP ultimately advised that with the change to a tower on base zoning, the most effective way to produce affordable housing was to use existing inclusionary housing framework, which is what we have done. I'm pleased that DCP has also committed to reviewing and making changes to the inclusionary housing framework citywide, which will help us further incentivize the affordable housing that our community is eager to see built in the East 50s. With the erroneous inclusion of a grandfathering provision, I am asking my colleagues to modify the application as we initially submitted and as the city planning chair initially recommended. Your vote today is in support of real housing for real New Yorkers and will protect octogenarians like Herndon Worth and seniors like Charles Fernandez and his sister who face displacement from their affordable rent-regulated units from billionaires building buildings for other billionaires. Thank you. Billionaires building buildings for other billionaires. Say that fast five times and I tell me how that alliteration. works out. Okay, wonderful. Um, Council Member Barron to make some remarks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My remarks are regarding the uh, Bedford Union Armory, the project that my colleague just described. We know that we have a serious housing crisis in our city. Predominantly, we're looking at the number of ever-increasing homelessness. We know that the city has an obligation to address those issues. As I reviewed the report from the Association for Neighborhood Housing and Development, they indicated that the greatest need for housing was for people who were at 60% of AMI and below. So um, while we've looked at a number of increase in the housing units, and we see that we have a number that has been increased in this project, to say that nearly half of the units at market rate, namely 40%, to me does not address the issue of a bringing housing to most of the city that has a need for housing. So understanding that and understanding that the communities of Crown Heights, of um, Bed-Stuy, and of the northern part of East New York are looking to bring in housing for a group of people that differ from the people who presently live there, to me, does not address the housing crisis that we face in this city. And for that reason, I will not be able to support this project. I think that until we match where the needs for housing are with the incomes of the people who live in this city, we will not address the housing crisis. Thank you. Councilmember Cumbo would like to respond. Councilmember Cumbo. Thank you so much, Councilmember Barron, for your um, comments. I too shared those. And part of the challenge with this project, unlike, unlike many other projects, is that this particular project was formed around a state-of-the-art recreational facility that was going to need income in order to be able to manage the project for the life of the project. And so there were discussions about we could truly achieve the affordability at AMIs of 60 and below um, for the entire housing portion if we eliminated the recreational facility. Because the recreational facility, in order to provide um, affordability and accessibility, uh, we had to um, manage the project by allowing for there still to be 40% at market rate in order to offset for the life of the project the cost to operate the recreational facility as well as the not-for-profit spaces um, as well as the opportunity for Brooklyn Medical Plaza to be a part of the project. If we eliminated all of that, we could have achieved the 100% at 60 AMI and below, but the community spoke loud and clear that a recreational facility is what they thought was most important for this community and a recreational facility of this caliber has never existed in central Brooklyn before. So I understand your, I understand your, um, 
concerns. I understand that of the communities. And while everyone's not going to be in support and favor of every project, as we should not be, um, I just wanted to address that to provide clarity for the broader audience as well. I thank you for that, Mr. Chair, if I may. I thank you for that, uh, and I understand that. And that's always the argument that is uh, advanced when they talk about increasing affordable housing. Well, Council Member, if in order to do this, you've got to be able to have a trade-off. And that's the same argument that's being presented for the Brooklyn Bridge development. Well, in order to pay for this affordability and this beautiful Brooklyn Bridge voucher, you've got to have this housing. I don't accept that. I think the city can find other ways to do what its obligation is to meet housing needs of people who are in greatest need. Respected. Thank you, respected. Okay, any other council members have any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I would like to congratulate the speaker on her significant achievements and rezonings today, including the deeper level of affordability. I want to congratulate council member Cumbo for really uh, an incredible achievement. I think a lot of folks don't realize that when this project first started, the previous council member, state senator, and borough president only asked for one thing which was to have a recreational center, and here we are several years later. You not only have the rec center, you have guaranteed access to people who are low income, and you have 60% of those units will be at 60% of AMI or below, which means that it will not be for, it, the max will be for families who are making $57,000 a year. That is the maximum income, and it will go all the way down to families who are making as little as 20 something thousand dollars a year. So that's a significant achievement and we congratulate you. And finally, I want to congratulate Councilmember Kalos and Garodnik and especially Councilmember Kalos for his fortitude and uh, his perseverance. I'm sure there's going to be a book in here somewhere or at least you can check it out on his Twitter handle, at Ben Kalos, the saga of how he got this done and it was a significant achievement and uh, it was really very well done community organizing to get to this space as well, and congratulations as well. With that, I now call a vote in accordance with the recommendation of the subcommittees and with the support of the local council members to approve reconsidered LU 697 seat intermediate school, LU 818, the Dunwall Plaza tax exemption, reconsidered LU 1646, Amsterdam Plaza and Lost Stress Unidos tax exemptions, as well as LU 790, the Sendero Verde tax exemption, and to approve with the modifications that I have described, the Bedford Union Armory, LUs 808 through 812, pre-considered LU East River 50 set in place, LU 773 through 775, the East Harlem neighborhood rezoning, LU 776 through 782, Sendero Verde, and LU 785 through 786, the Special Harlem River Waterfront District, and to file the withdrawn application for the NCP Park and Elton Apartments, LU 746. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are a couple. Chair Greenfield. I vote aye and all. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I, um, I, wanted, I, I just wanted to take a couple, uh, a brief moment. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Council Members Kalos and Garodnik, but um, I especially want to uh, acknowledge my colleague, Lori Cumbo, my colleague and friend. Um, over the last year and a half, I've seen up close um, how Lori has approached this extremely difficult uh, land use uh, proposal. And I can say um, that I am very proud of the way that she uh, has approached this. She has approached this with uh, the utmost dignity and integrity and political courage and decency and, um, and professionalism. And every step of the way, she was conscientious of all sides of the argument and seeking the best solution and holding uh, to her uh, deeply held positions and not compromising where it mattered and making sure that uh, she was listening to all sides and, 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 uh, and getting to a, uh, a excellent, excellent outcome. And uh, I just want to uh, be on the record saying how uh, proud I am to uh, call Lori a colleague and a friend and how proud of I, I am of, of her throughout this process. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gentili. Aye on all. Gar aye. Mendez. Rodriguez. 
Ku. Abo aye. Lander. With congratulations to Councilmember Cumbo and Councilmember Kalos and the speaker uh, and enthusiasm for the inclusion of the certificate of no harassment in the East Harlem rezoning. More on that to come soon. Uh, I vote aye on all. Congratulations. Rose. Aye. Williams. Aye. Richards. Uh, congratulations, Councilman Bocumbo, and I'm glad the administration is, is obviously reviewing their policy on luxury condos uh, being placed on city land. So I want to congratulate you uh, on ensuring that you are uh, obviously getting some uh, real affordable housing for your community. Uh, so congratulations, I vote aye. Mendez. Barron. I vote aye with the exception of the Bedford Union Armory land use 808 through 812. On which I'm voting no. Thank you. Kalos. Thank you to all my colleagues. I vote aye proudly. Reynoso. <clears throat> I will vote aye on all and just want to make mention to the fact that uh, the affordable housing in the city of New York continues to be built in places of color almost exclusively. Thank you. Torres. Uh, just a quick permission to explain my vote. I want to congratulate Councilmember Cumbo for negotiating what I take to be a strong deal for your community. I do feel that we should have, a, we should strive toward a citywide policy of reserving the disposition of city owned land for community development or affordable housing purposes. So I hope that we're not addressing this issue on a ULERP by ULERP basis, but adopt a citywide policy that advocates for proper uses of publicly owned land. So. But that said, I vote probably aye. Traeger. Vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Salamanca. I want to congratulate my colleague, Laura Combo, on a job well done. And I vote aye on all. Williams. Councilmember Williams to explain his vote. Thank you very much. Uh, as mentioned, I am uh, abstaining on pre to the LUs at East River 50, Sutton Place. Uh, I know a lot of uh, work was done. Just to try to remain consistent. My uh, uh, philosophy on affordable housing. Uh, it just wasn't addressed in that one. I'm not sure why. Uh, I haven't got any uh, real reason, so I'm just going to abstain on that one. Um, I'm also, for the moment, and my vote may change on the floor, going to abstain on the uh, Bedford Armory and wanted to explain that. Um, one, I, I did want to also congratulate uh, Councilmember Cumbo. Uh, I stood with her a while back when she said she wasn't going to support the project unless there were some significant changes. And so even some of the opponents now have to agree that there has been some significant changes in the project. It went from very little uh, units below 60 percent uh, below 60 percent to 60 percent of the units, and that's uh, that's over half of the units there. Where where I get stuck is uh, the other 40 percent. I do believe if there was no rec center, uh, it would be clear slam dunk for me to to oppose this. But it seems that the community really did want a rec center and needed to be part of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is persuasive whether it is. Um, additional affordability or rec center, it has to be paid for somehow. And the money is not uh, perpetual. The money doesn't just come out of the tree, so somebody has to pay for it. The city, the, the community seemed to want the, the rec center uh, important, so it has to be paid for. It's also persuasive that we want to make sure it's paid for in perpetuity. And so if it's not in perpetuity, if it is just city funds, it is open to being cut in the future. So that does provide some difficulty for me. The way it is set up now uh, with the 40 percent of market rate, we can clearly say that it, it, the rec center can provide some services in perpetuity. Since I just got this, I do want to do a deep dive into what access to that community center um, the community actually has, and I haven't had time to do that. And so for that reason, I'm going to vote. I'm going to abstain on this for the time being. Congratulations to all my colleagues and I and all the rest. My vote of 18 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and all abstentions. All items have been adopted with the exception of the following. The preconsidered land use item application number N180082 ZRM has been adopted by a vote of 17 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention. And land use items 808 through 812 have been adopted by the committee 
16 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and one abstention. This concludes the Land Use Committee for November 21st, 2017. I wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. This meeting is hereby adjourned.